Uncle see, this is, the, this is the first time uh, we are castinating for you. See? That's a castinate. And see, see, see the soil quality. See, see the soil quality. Yep. Can you see? Yes. And see the amount of shrimp which has come in two meters. Yep. Vibrant, moving, jumping. Right? And the net. So one of the things you wanted to show me, right? The net is completely clean. No mud. Ecuadorian farmer coming to see Monodon farm, right? Yes. Okay. So photo photo. I have to cover this my 79 exactly, see. 79 exactly. Yeah. This boy, this boy is working with me from 20 years now. Okay. Amazing. So, 20, 18 to 20 gram shrimp. Okay, in, seven, a, in 80 days. A, Are you recording? Yes. All right. So, we have here the mud from the bottom of the pond, right? Which they, is already just, 80 days he old. He just went in, got this, and this is a 80, 79 day old pond with 20 gram shrimp, what density you, do you have here? Let's say between 30 to 40 pieces of animals per square meter, half hectare, perfectly this square is, this design, is, yeah, yeah. right? So a bunch of things are very important. When you have so many days with, with 40 animals per square meter, this should be black, not mud color, not, this is light, um, light brown. Natural, natural, natural soil. Natural soil, natural like the color, other, like yeah. the other soil. So what, what, what you, you were expect to find is a black, black soil, right? Proper of having so many days with, with the excretion of the animals and the molting of the shells, everything falls to the bottom. But Mr. Manoj, Dr. Manoj has uh, done an excellent job in keeping the water quality of this mud. So this is absolutely, absolutely a great because mud, Because, because mud I strongly quality. believe that shrimp is like also a, a human being, requires clean food, clean water and clean plates to eat. Absolutely. So, so this so is the clean plate, clean water and clean food. This is where they live, right? And of the course. monodon and the monodon are much more of a ground animal than the yes, vanamate. They the are vanamate. more benthic than vanamate. Yeah. So monodon, if you are culturing monodon, the key to success is clean water. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. I get to see this automatic feeder out of here. working. As you can see, the automatic feeder has a line wire, which it keeps, keeps it in range. So it can go around the entire pond feeding. This takes away the necessity to have several feeders and it takes less work. You, you refill it all in one spot, right? So let me zoom out a little bit. Now it's a, it's a bad day for the camera because it's raining, but it's always a good day for farming because this is natural weather and this is the way it works. So let's go back to that automatic feeder, which is taking its stroll around the pond is going to go around the pond there's another um, turn there on each corner it has a turn and it will make itself it would make itself its way back all the way to its starting point after going around and every X amount of time, which is programmable, it will throw feed. You see it turning right there? Turn. After he told me how many years of experience he had in the shrimp farming industry. But how many ponds are there in this farm? Uh, this is actually uh, a, a 60 hectare farm. Okay. And uh, I had divided it into uh, 45 ponds. 45 of, of, ponds. Of 0.4 hectare. 20 hectares has gone into water treatment because I have a very, very good uh, water treatment right from taking from the creek to settlement one, to settlement two, to reservoir one, reservoir two, then treatment and then to feeder canal and all. What you were saying right now, just to explain to everyone, he was talking about settlement one, settlement two, yeah. right? What that means is he's pumping water into his pond, but he's settling it, settling it one time, two time, three time. Once he's done wasting time, effort, and money in settling that water, that water quality, after all of the treatment that he does, he not only allows it to settle, he adds probiotics to it, right? And 
he cleans that water to make sure that the when the water gets to the actual pond, it is the best and highest quality water that is available for the shrimp. So he actually doesn't want to give that water back, right? The least possible. If he has to harvest and give the water back, it will be better than the water that he brought in. Absolutely. No, and the, and the, the single line for having such a hectic schedule of water to filtration treatment to avoid disease because the water should be disease free because this area is already having 1000 numbers of ponds. Okay. So the disease like white spot, the viral disease, the bacterial disease, the protozoal disease, especially with monodon, the EHP, the zoothamnium, that can come only through pumping direct water to your system. Right. So why I want uh, different pre-settlement, pre-reservoirs, treatment, because every time I take the water... By the way, sorry, the, the feeding machine just got back to its starting point while we were talking, yes. right? It has and completed the it, one cycle. It completed one cycle, went around, fed, did its thing, and it's back to starting point where he has that little bridge that you can handle, fix, uh, refill, and then it can go again. You don't need to refill it every time it turns. You can actually fill it, I'm guessing, one time per day. Yeah, yeah, maybe. So, yes. yeah, we, maybe we, one we time have, every we two days. We have a capacity of 40, 50 kilo. Yeah, depending on what you are, what you need for that day. And then that that container can go even up to 100 yeah. kilo. No so, sorry, I interrupted because I saw the, the toy come. The, I call it the toy, but I saw the, it's automatic, a toy. It's a toy. the automatic feeder come back home, right? Uh, so, E.T. is back home. Um, but we were talking about how he... All of these viruses, all of these pathogens, all of these diseases, right? He wants to pump the less amount of water into the pond to avoid pumping in disease. For example, I'm talking mm -hmm. about this biosecurity. Yeah. This is, a very, see. this is a very small feature. You know what is this, my friend? No. Oh, when is, when I is, saw it and you first were rope, talking to this me. This is a rope. And, with a smaller and, rope. And you could see within 8 inch, there is a, there is a monofilament twine. Yep. You it know, goes all the way across you know, to the other side. This is the biggest biosecurity measure because this doesn't allow any bird or foreign birds to get into my pond. And then fly out and because take one animal from here because to a different pond. Because the moment the animal will get into the pond, it, it can bring disease from one pond to another pond. Correct. Plus, it will also eat animals. Like humans get colds um, and, and you get through the cold, right? Um, there's in the, in the shrimp farms. All, over, all around the world, you have a point or some time where you can get a disease that doesn't wipe out your farm, but it kills a few animals, right? A disease kills a few animals. Those animals would wash up to the shore, to the border, right? And once the animals are there, the birds see them and they come down, they eat them. So what happens? They'll eat a diseased or a, or a, or a sick, a dead animal, right? That died for some reason. And maybe they are flying away. And why are they flying away? Over the another pond, they can drop, they can drop the fish that they have, or the shrimp that they have in their mouth, Absolutely. right? And now you have transported the disease that was here to the next pond or to the next pond, or even kilometers down the road. Now, another thing, yeah. when the bird goes into your pond, he's the, the, bringing the, the everything wing, that he's wing, got. Wings get all body gets wet, yeah, and it flies and go to the other pond. He will carry all the bacteria, all the virus on the exactly. body to a new pond. Yeah. So I have seen uh, this bird fencing mm -hmm. gives you immense degree of biosecurity. Yeah. That birds will cannot come to pond. And it's not intrusive, you know. It's and it's not, not possible in Ecuador right now. No. Because Ecuador, it's you have large. a smaller farm, yeah. 5 hectare and the biggest of 50 hectare. Yeah. Ecuador's production has increased only by one reason. And that reason is technification and improvement of the pond management. Correct. You have not changed the design. You have not changed the farm. You have changed the practices. Practices yes. means better feeding. Yep. Better feed as well. Better aeration. Yep. Better feed and improved in stocking density. Yep. So you are, you have the same pond, same system, but little bit improvement. Mm -hmm. you, you have done a very better technification. So your production has gone from 300 kilo uh, per hectare to 4 ton per hectare. Yeah. So, so means there is no advancement in construction and design, only improvement in pond management, feed nutrition, mm -hmm. genetic management, and so too, technification has done very good. Yeah. So, so God bless, you do very good. But worst case scenario, if you struck with the disease. Correct. So biosecurity protocol cannot be managed in existing system. That's right. So that's that's exactly that's what, what I'm we, saying. Yes. God forbid if nothing yeah, yeah, happens, yeah. it's and, and it's a blessing for Ecuador. I, I understand it completely, but if but it happens, yeah. 
the future is like this. Yeah. So it just, I just tone it down and explain it for the non-shrimp technical uh, uh, viewers that we're going to have. Maybe even show this video in the in the shrimp masterclass in October. So um, I am just so happy to be here. Oh, this is very far away from home, but it looks identical to home, right? This this the the farming, the field, the love for the farming. Everybody is so dedicated. We stopped by Manoja's office. Dedication and hard work you see in the office. Everybody was committed. There was an ongoing BAP audit at the moment. So we walk in and, and everybody's BAP ready and I'm here taking everybody's time away, but, but they, they run their ship tight. So there's no problem. They, they can do it with, uh, they handle the BAP audit while Dr. Manoj is here treating the foreign. No, because this around. has already been audited seven times. So we are all used yeah. to it. So it's not, it's not everything on the place. Yeah. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.